will fit in. And back now at Madison Square Garden in New York City in the Republican National Convention. And with us now is Susan Estridge, who was the first woman ever to run a, a presidential campaign and uh, certainly on the Democratic side and joins us now for a little balance. Susan, good to see you. Great to be with you, Shep. I want to play a soundbite from last night. Zell Miller, a fellow Democrat of yours. Well, I don't know. Well, I, a soundbite from what he said last night. And what to say he was on the attack might be the understatement of the day. Listen to what Zell Miller said. Kennedy Carey have opposed the very weapons systems that won the Cold War and that are now winning the war on terror against the Patriot missile that shot down Saddam Hussein's Scud missiles over Israel, against the Aegis air defense cruiser, against the strategic defense initiative, against the Trident missile, against, against, against. This is this is the man who wants to be the commander-in-chief of the U.S. Armed Forces. U.S. Forces armed with what? Spitballs? Armed with spitballs. That's how he finished. Uh, he, he, he made us, did he make a strong case and how do you counter it? I think he made a strong case for John Kerry last night. I got to tell you, at first, my Democratic friends were very upset about Zigzag Zell. You know, that's his nickname from Georgia, speaking at the Republican convention. But after watching the video of Ronald Reagan, who was a conservative without anger, who was optimistic, who was full of sunshine, and then Zell Miller got up there like an angry old man, and he was throwing spitballs. I got to tell you, I think he was very, ineffective. I think he came across terribly. Zell Miller says his anger is from, and these are his words, a party which left him, not one which he left. Well, he may say that but, you know, Shep, I just think he was very, very ineffective last night. I think he came across as an angry old man. And then I saw him interviewed afterwards. And quite frankly, he couldn't explain his own speech. He started being asked, well, you know, when he was Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney opposed many of the same weapon systems that John Kerry also opposed. And quite frankly, Zell was unable to explain his own speech, and it was really embarrassing to watch. You know, Zell used to work for Les Dramatics before he uh, switched over and then ran to the left of Herman Talmadge. And all I could think of when he was giving the speech was those pickaxes that Les Dramatics used to give out when he ran, what was it, the Pickwick restaurant? And I thought maybe he should have had some of those pickaxes last night. I was watching the speech on television, and I felt like, why is this man so angry. He has no Ronald Reagan in him. None of the sunshine, none of the positive sort of optimism. And I think it was a real mistake for the Republicans to put him up there because I really do think it was a turnoff last night. So the Republicans can have Zell Miller. We Democrats, we don't want him. One, one point he made, which a lot of Republicans seem to agree with, and even some moderates on the Democratic side, today's Democratic leaders see America as an occupier, not a liberator. He said America must elect a commander-in-chief from a party that saw the armed forces as occupiers. Well, you know, I got to tell you something. Bush uses the word occupation all the time. I mean, I don't know what Zell's talking about. And if you look back to his speech in 1992, I don't know how you can at one point nominate Bill Clinton and then 12 years later come back and nominate George W. Bush. It just seems to me that the guy who's lost his way here is Zell Miller. I have a lot of respect for consistent Republicans. I respect Arnold Schwarzenegger. I respect Ronald Reagan. I just think Zell Miller is the guy who's lost his way. If you watched Chris Wallace last Sunday, which I'm sure you did. I did, I did. Boy. There was a point in Chris's interview with Zell where he started making the case for change. And then all of a sudden he stopped for a minute and thought, oh no, where am I? What year is this? I'm not making the case for change. I got to make the case for stability. I just think this is a little embarrassing to watch. And he didn't help his case or the Republicans' case last night. One quick question with a real quick answer. The Democrats didn't get a bump. Will the Republicans? Oh, 
I don't know. Maybe they'll get a bump, but this one isn't going to be decided by the conventions either side. All right. Susan Estridge, thank you. Always thank good to you, see you. Yeah. Coming up here, uh, the state of Florida, man, they are getting out of there mighty fast. More than a million people have been told now to evacuate the Sunshine State. The storm is churning that net way. We're now thinking the early morning hours of, this, of, the, of Saturday. But if they wait that long, it'll be way too late. Continuing coverage in a live interview with Max Mayfield from the National Hurricane Center in just a moment. And here at Madison Square Garden, Andy Card, the White House Chief of Staff, will ask him about domestic agenda. You haven't heard that much about it just yet. You will in a moment on Fox News Channel's continuing coverage of the RNC at Madison Square Garden.